Chapter 6, Party in the Big City. You sit comfortably in Mandy's truck as she drives you and Ryder down a stretch of country road towards the Martinez family fundraiser. You all right back there, Ryder? You're pretty quiet. Just thinking of all the work that's going undone. So far, I'm up to replacing the trough's intake valve and meeting with the farrier. You can get to the trough next week. Besides, this is supposed to be a tree, not a punishment. You can practically hear Ryder's teeth grinding from the backseat. I'm a rancher, not some penguin in a suit. Back me up on this bell. Tell Mandy how far behind we are. I think... Ryder deserves our sympathy. He's the one who's gonna have to pick up all the slack when we get back. Damn straight. I knew I liked you for a reason. Mandy pressed her foot on the gas, surging the car forward. Well, it doesn't matter because we're almost there. My dad throws this event every year to raise money for charity and network, so I need everyone on their best behavior. I'm always on my best behavior. One of us has to be able to talk manure and combine blades. And one of us has to remember to sip champagne and flirt her way into discount supplies. And then there's me, who has to somehow keep from exposing myself as a fraud to Mandy's parents. Yikes. Your stomach ties itself in knots, but as the car pulls to a ritzy hotel, you stomp it down and help Ryder unload the bags. You stomp it down. Okay. Oh, wow. I know Mandy said this is going to be fancy, but not like this. A woman in a long, sparkling gown and tiara brushes past you. Watch my dress, Harold. This is Balmain. Sorry, love. My Rolex got caught on your sleeve. Your eyes grow wide as you watch the pair make their way through the event doors to where a dozen more people are dressed to the hilt. Can't help but feel dowdy in comparison. In these clothes, we're gonna stick out like a trio of sore thumbs. Well, then I guess it's lucky for us that our clothes came in with the seamstress, and even better, they match. Mandy hands each of us a garment bag, and as soon as Ryder catches sight of your outfit, his gay slides towards your towards you. I bet you clean up pretty nice, Belle. This is a perfect way to show my dads and all their stuffy friends that Martinez Ranch staff is a team. Trash chick. Okay. If it'll help the ranch. That's the spirit, now come on. We can change in the bathroom and head straight to the party. The three of you duck in the lobby bathroom. Each take a stall as you slip into the outfit. You can practically feel the ranch stress melting away. I almost forgot what it's like to look and feel like a real person. Ah, because ranch people aren't real people. <laughs> You step out to find Manny and Ryder, putting the finishing touches on their looks. As soon as they see you, their jaws, jaws drop. Damn, Belle. I know you'd do that outfit justice, but not like that. Not bad for a ranch hand. Not bad at all. Your whole body heats at their compliments, your pulse picking up as you take in the tight fit of Mandy's gown. Well, I, I was more or less admiring all the gold. It's kind of pretty. I like it. It's very nature-esque. And the way Ryder's tux clings to his shoulders. Well, I admire the black more or less on that one. You two uh, aren't so bad yourselves. When it comes to clothes and ranch innovations, I'm never wrong. She turns her back to you, and the dress clinging to her every curve. Would you do me up? I can't reach the zipper. You place a hand on her waist to, to steady yourself as you tug the zipper up the smooth lines of her back. Brush her hair aside and do it myself. 
You brush aside her hair until you expose the bare, sloping perfection of her shoulders. A whiff of something sweet and intoxicating rises from the heat of her skin. How is it possible that you smell even better than you look? That's nothing. You should s you should see the way I taste. You should see the way I taste. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Your breath hitches as she tilts her head to the side. The longer you stand there, the more you can see the delicate pulse in her neck picking up. And the more you want to press your mouth against him. As Ryder grunts in annoyance, you step back and survey him instead. He's frowning at his reflection, fiddling with his bolo tie. I hate these stupid things. How do I even tighten it? Just slide it up. Stand in front of him, trying not to stare at the way his shirt hugs his wide, powerful chest. Tease him about his lack of skills. Yeah, okay. You tug on the collar of his shirt until his head is level with your own. I see how this would be hard with your massive fingers. These fingers can do quite a lot, Bell, more than you know. As you tug the bolo tie to a proper length, his eyes meet yours for a hot, suggestive moment. Nothing about his cologne? No? Okay. I might be a little biased, but we look amazing. She hooks her arm through yours and Ryers and begins dragging you to the door. Now let's get out there and work the room. The event hall is packed as the three of you stand in the entrance, taking it all in. You've never seen so many bejeweled cowboy hats gathered in one place or seen so many faces you don't recognize. I'm glad I'm here with Ryder. Ah, oh, we have to make a choice. <sighs> Shit. Listen, he's in that suit. I just have to. Ryder is just as out of place as me. We can get through this together. That too. You glance towards Ryder and he reassures you with a quirk of his lips. You look like a colt that's uh, come to face to face with his first stray bull. The crowd seems to swallow the three of you as you take your places. You're tempted to beeline for the nearest corner, but Mandy heads you off. Okay, you two, there are a few people I'm dying to introduce you to, but we have to get the most important ones out of the way first. She taps on the shoulder of a tall, distinguished man standing in front of her. He turns and immediately engulfs her in a sweeping bear hug. Mandykins, you're here. Hey, Dad. The second man turns more slowly, but the harsh lines of his face soften as he catches sight of Mandy. Good to see you, Mandy, as always. Both men turn to Ryder. The sterner man nods in greeting, but the other takes one look at the well-dressed cowboy and bursts into laughter. <laughs> Only Mandy could wrangle you into an outfit like that, Ryder. What did she do? Threaten death? You brace yourself, waiting for Ryder's usual gruff outburst. Not death, just dismemberment. She knows she can't run the ranch without me. Wait, Ryder, did you just crack a joke on purpose? He looks sheepish. Don't look so shocked, Belle. The Martinez's are the closest thing to family I have. I didn't know. The pleasure's all mine, Mr. and Mr. Martinez. Dad, this is a new ranch hand I told you about, Belle Dixon. Bell, these are my dads, Julio and Patrick. Both men take you in with a sweeping, surprised glance. Really? This is the fresh blood? Interesting. You look so much at home. I took you as a potential investor, not a laborer. Thank you. Mandy chose the outfit. Your daughter is a force of nature. Whatever she says goes. I sound like Mandy, I know. She always had an eye for appearances. Oh, thanks, Belle. It's easy to make a woman like you look good. I'm glad you're on time for once, Mandy. There's something we'd like to discuss with you. I thought we decided not to bring that up tonight. A bill for a thousands of dollars worth of goat milk equipment deserves some explanation. Oh, you got that already. You guys are going to love what I'm doing. We've already got goats housed and installed. Mandy seems oblivious to their growing scowls as she launches into a list of all the things she has planned. 
I'm still working out a few of the kinks, but I finally nailed down the goat cheese recipe. I brought a bunch of samples for people to try and... Not another word, young lady. They didn't give you permission for any of this. You didn't even think to consult with us first? Look to Ryder for help. Mmm, I'm a new ranch hand, so it's not really my place. But new insight might be something that may help. Quickly, you step in, drop a hand to Mandy's shoulder. She's not exaggerating. The cheese is really good. Patrick shoots you a withering stare. Thank you, but we're talking to our daughter. You don't even want to taste it first? Mandy, we talked about this kind of thing. One of these days, you're in... Petuacity is going to end up costing us more than just money. You know what? This feels like more of a family conversation. Why don't we see ourselves out? He nudges you with the tip of his cowboy boot to lead you away before any of the Martinez's have a chance to react. Yeah, it means you get fired. Let's check out the past apps. I've got 20 uh, on them being something French that I can't pronounce. Wait. We're just gonna abandon her? Trust me, it's better not to get involved. Mandy's dads can be intense. It seems like they... Hmm. I don't know, it seems like it's 50-50, really, for both of them. Patrick doesn't like Ryder, but Patrick likes her, but not... I don't know, it's, it's really tough read. Don't have faith in Mandy. They didn't even listen to her plans for the goats. Yeah, she didn't deserve that. But aren't you always saying her ideas are too far out there? It's different coming from me. She doesn't need my approval. I think this is the first time I've seen you take Mandy's side in anything. Yeah, well... You see a lot as an outsider looking in. He shrugs and plucks a hoard of ore from a passing waiter's platter. Those two can't see her as anything other than their little girl, even though she's a lot more capable than they give her credit for. You're in the middle of reaching for a snack yourself when you're bumped from behind by a young man in an impeccable suit. Hey, watch where you're going. Sorry, I didn't see you. Obviously. If you had, you treated me with more respect. Oh, God, it's Colt. They changed how he looked. You do know who I am, right? The Colt name's Colt. Colt Monroe. You know, it sounds like a stripper's name. Either that or someone's pet dog. You can't talk to me like that. What are you gonna do about it, Jack? He turns to Ryder with an angry stomp of his foot. You put her up to this, didn't you? You'll have to forgive Colt. He's famous for having zero manners. At least I'm not the one about to lose my job. Rumor has it your time's up. The truth that the Martinez's are going under. Isn't this event a little outside your usual scene? Don't tell me you're finally taking your clown show on the road. <laughs> That was actually pretty good. <laughs> Maybe we should all go grab a drink from the bar. Before you can finish your sentence, another man steps up to join the conversation, and this time, this is one you recognize. Hey, Colt. I was hoping to run into you, Nine. That's one of Cal's best friends. What is Peter doing all the way out here? Peter turns to you and Ryder with a polite nod. You going to introduce me to your friends? I'm no friend of Colt's. Ryder here only wishes he could hang out with me. That leaves you, I guess. I'm Peter. Peter Laramie. He sweeps his gaze over your outfit with a nod of approval. Let me guess, you must be an investor. He doesn't recognize me in these clothes. Now I just need to act natural and keep it that way. I'm part of the Martinez Ranch. Yeah, Mandy, me, work. 
Your tongue cleaves to the roof of your mouth as you force the words out. Peter's eyes narrow because he takes you in. The Martinez Ranch, huh? Maybe that's why you look so familiar. You try to back away, but your knees are suddenly too weak to bear your weight. All feelings you've tried to suppress come rushing over you. It's just like Cal said, I can't do anything right. Even one tiny fundraiser is too much for me. Ryder takes one look at you and mutters something indecipherable. What's wrong, Ryder? I got your tongue. Instead of answering him, Ryder grabs you by the elbow and steers you across the room. You're barely aware of your surroundings as he leads you to a discreet corner. What the hell was that, Bell? You shake your head, unable to speak while your adrenaline holds your hostage. Seriously, you don't want to get on Colt Monroe's bad side. He's a nasty piece of work. What the hell did we do? Seriously. <clears throat> you try swallowing, but your throat sticks halfway through. As soon as Ryder notices how much difficulty you're having, his expression undergoes a sudden shift. Damn it, Bill. I'm sorry. You're, you're not okay, are you? Who was that guy? He's... Someone from my past. I didn't expect to see anyone I know here. You hunch your shoulders to try and make yourself smaller. The whole reason I became a ranch hen was to hide away for a while. Never... I never should have agreed to come tonight. Hmm. Knowing Mandy, I doubt you could have said much to get out of it. As you struggle to get your bearings, the room suddenly starts to feel very small and very hot. Hey, you don't look so good. That's because I don't feel so good. You want to get out of here for a while? You look like you could use some fresh air. He offers you a lopsided grin that makes your heart turn over in your chest. Uh, and I'm sure as hell could use a break from all the suits. In fact, you'd be doing me a huge so favor. Ryder's probably just being nice, but some alone time with him sounds like a great way to get out my head on straight. You're sure you don't mind? Considering you look like you just swallowed a live octopus? Yeah, Bell, I'm sure. His hand is on your back and pushing you across the room before you know it. You duck and avoid eye contact with the guests until you're out in the hallway. Why does it always feel like you're rescuing me from dangerous situations? He grimaces as someone brushes past you looking for coat check. Just a sec, we're not in the clear yet. Taking you firmly by the hand, he ducks into a private alcove with just enough room for one. He falls to the seat, tugging you with him. There, no one will be able to see or hear us in here. He pulls you onto his lap, his powerful thighs flex as you land, his arms lightly cradling you. Oh. Give it a second, your heart is beating like a jackrabbit's. Ryder, I didn't think it's beating from fear. You twine your arms around his neck until your chest touches his. You can feel the flutter of his heart against yours. There's another way to get my pulse going. Wanna guess what it is? I think I have an idea. Wow, she's comfortable to flirt. But all of a sudden, you have someone from her past in front of her and she's like, oh! He groans as you wiggle your ass suggestively against him. The rising edge of his interest is impossible to ignore, but he drops his hands to your hips to hold you still. There's no hint of a smile on his face as he studies you, his eyes scanning your face as if reading the page of a book. You can talk to me, you know. Whatever the guy did to you, you're safe with me. For a moment, you hesitate, and then... Peter is a friend of my ex's. He was friends with my ex, Cal. He seems surprised by your honesty, his legs twitching under yours. That's who you're running from, your ex? You drop your gaze to the front of his shirt and refuse to let it stray. Yeah, I didn't love the person I was with him. I think Peter brought it all rushing back. You shift as you consider how close you were to losing everything, and how much it's starting to mean to you. Ryder's arms tighten around you. Bell. Please don't ask me anything else. It's so nice and cozy here. He opens his mouth to speak, but you swing one leg over the top of his lap before he can make a sound. What are you... 
You shift your hips forward, your thighs spreading wide as you straddle him. I'm done talking. I'd much rather do this. Only women can do these kinds of distractions. I'm serious. Guys, what do we do? Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. You press your lips against this before he can protest. His shock gives way almost immediately to greed as he slides his tongue into your mouth. You can be a real nuisance sometimes, you know that? His hands fall to your waist and start moving you roughly against him. Hot, liquid longing floods between your thighs. It seems to me that you like nuisances just fine. You arch your back, thrusting your whole body forward until it rocks against his, feeling him beneath you as he groans. Well, we can't finish right here. What's stopping us? You grind slow at first, relishing the sensation of him pressed against you. Ryder hungrily thrusts his hip to me, or sending a jolt of pleasure through you. Mm, we're not alone for starters, and I want to be the only one who hears you make that sound. He seizes control now, claiming your lips in another kiss and surrendering to his knee. You feel his hands start to tug the bottom of your dress up towards your hips. The tiny alcove seems to pulse with emotion and the hot, heaty scent of arousal as you flick open the top button of Ryder's shirt as hard, smooth chest beckons. Do you always know how to find a secret hiding place for emergencies? Don't blame me. I like to know where my exits are at all times. Just like a spy. Unable to resist, you lean down and lick the hollow of his throat. He takes like salt and light, musky tang of his cologne. Now we are talking about the cologne. <laughs> I'm serious. <clears throat> or a cowboy with a crush on his new ranch hand. Who the hell said anything about a crush? Despite his harsh words, he takes your mouth into his own a soft, sultry kiss. Your tongues tangle in the wet heat as you sink deeper and deeper in his embrace. Only you hear the Mandy's voice just outside. Unbelievable. It's like they don't even consider me a real person. You and Ryder rush up to the balcony to find Mandy flushed and furious, pacing back and forth across the floor. I'm a grown-ass woman for crying out loud. I pay taxes. I think I can make one tiny business decision on my own. She turns to you both, her anger dissolving to something a lot closer to tears. I'm sorry I dragged you both out to this stupid thing. It's been a huge waste of time. Mandy. Hmm. I don't think Ryder made much small talk, but time spent with you is never wasted. You look great in the dress. The food's fantastic. Your dad's sprung for live music. We're all together. What could be better than that? You're right. A party is still a party. Mandy shakes herself off, but you can detect a lingering tightness around her eyes. Either way, we should probably start packing up the goat cheese samples I brought. My dads won't even let me try to hand them out. Leave it to me, boss. I'll pack everything up while you and Belle enjoy what's left of the party. Really? You don't mind? No, I think Ryder needs a moment to get his uh, <clears throat> situation straight. Well, now, let me see. I can either stay here, chit-chat, or I can busy myself with cheese until it's time to go home. Ryder holds his hands palm side up, weighing the two options before dropping the chit-chat hand to his hip. Oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna go with cheese over the chit-chat any day. The music picks up as Ryder leaves, and through the balcony doors you see several couples take to the dance floor. I only met them for a moment, but one thing I can say for sure, your dads know how to throw a party. The music is great. Then dance with me. She takes you by the hand and tugs you forward. You set your uh, yours on her waist and feel a tingle of electricity. Dancing isn't going to fix this stuff with your dads. I know, Belle, but right now I need this. You're not going to leave me hanging, are you? Let me guess, diamond choice. She pulls back to look you in the eyes, and you sigh. Fine. But just one dance. We'll see about that. 
The moment you start to move to the beat, Mandy lets loose, her body a perfect study of grace and seduction. I like to think that if I wasn't a rancher's daughter, I'd have been a professional dancer. She turns around and rolls her hips back and forth, her hands tracing her shape. She peeks over her shoulder at you. What do you think, Belle? Think I could have made it? With moves like those, you'd make a fortune. Everyone in the ballroom is staring out here trying to get a peek at you. They can't get enough. I don't care about them. Right now, all I want is you. She hooks her arms around your neck and grinds her hips against yours. As her thighs nestle against yours, you can feel a liquid heat start to take over. I don't know why, but dancing has always been my favorite way to work off any pent-up frustration. Her hips grind against yours, slow and teasing. I think that's what you're doing while dancing. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. You're not sure whether to feel relieved or sad when the music shifts to a slow classic, but until Mandy's eyes light up. Oh, this is my favorite song. I promised you one dance, remember? I know, but I did say we'd see about that. After all, a girl can't slow dance alone. And she lays her head on your shoulder as she rocks against you slowly. You find your hand fitting into the curve of her waist. God, it's nice to be held like this. Really? But this time, I don't want to cheer you. You span Mandy around the corner, away from prying eyes. She melts against you, her lithe body liquid perfection. Hold me tight, Belle. I'm a woman who requires a firm hand. She guides your hands to her hips, and as she sways them from side to side, her hands find the nape of your neck. You're really good at this. Yeah, well, dancing is a form of self-expressing, and I've always had a lot to say. Your hands stray lower as she presses against you. The rest of the world falls away as you lose yourself in her sweet scent. I told you we'd have fun tonight. Did you meet any interesting people? Your mind immediately flashes the encounter with Peter and all anxiety it caused. Ah, uh, to be honest, I really needed this dance too. I ran into a man I did not want to see. It's pretty tense there for a few minutes. Luckily, he didn't recognize me. I'm sorry, Belle. Uh, Arrow's acting like the only one heard. She pulls you closer. The gentle rise and fall of her chest is so distracting that you almost forget about Peter and Cal. Want to point him out to me? Why? What are you going to do? You got a man that's bothering you, and this is my parents' party. Say the word, and he's out of here. You're actually going to kick a guy out of a fundraiser for me? Of course, Belle. You're one of us now, and I'm very good at protecting my people. Feel her hands slide to your backside, and she grips you firmly, possessively. Despite how good it feels to have Manny in your arms, tension clenches your muscles tight, sensing it she arches in the air. No one is allowed to be sad when you're dancing with me. House rules. She shimmies her hips and places her hands over yours, guiding them lower. She doesn't stop until you reach the hem of her skirt. Oh. She leans in close and flicks her tongue against the side of your neck. If you need a little distraction, I find this always works for me. Mm. Also, I apologize if I have to keep pausing the playthrough as I keep having sneezing fits. It's getting annoying. Whirl her to a private corner. Believe me, Mandy, having you pressed up against me is a distraction enough. Tighten your hold on her, spin her gently towards the edge of the balcony, facing her towards the darkened fields. Now that you got me where you want me, what do you plan to do with me? While you enjoy the view, I'm going to enjoy you. You slowly nod your dress strap off, clearing space for your lips to skim the slope of her shoulder. Hmm, looks like you got moves I wasn't expecting. She turns her head up and smiles softly at you. There's a lot more to you than me, the eye, Bill. When I first hired you, I thought... She trails off her lower lip, coughed between her teeth. You thought one. That you'd be a welcome distraction around the place, but there's more to your story than that, isn't there? My story... Should be saved for another day. 
this isn't the time or place to tell you all my deep, dark secrets. But you have them secrets that are deep and dark. You spin her around until she's as breathless as you are. Her eyes are glazed over as they meet yours. Let's just say things were dark for a while, and now, thanks to you, they're not. You drop your mouth to hers, and with a soft meal of approval, she invites you into her warm heat. Mmm, that's more like it. You gasp as she slides her tongue along yours, her whole body pressed against you so close that you can feel her nipples tightening against your chest. Just how far are we willing to take this? That depends. How far do you want to go? You give the balcony a cursory glance, making sure there are no wandering eyes before you, allowing a grin to overtake you. Mm, I'm thinking about right here. Get your bra strap down, as well exposing whatever breaks and circling its pert peak. Mandy closes her hand around yours. Careful, the way that feels, security would have to tear me off of you. Oh, I know the feeling. Your own body starts to react, pooling liquid desire between your thighs. Mandy's hands skim even lower, and just when you're about to beg her to touch you, the music stops and reality comes crashing down, shaking and panting for breath. Mandy adjusts herself and blinks up at you. I, um, think we should go find Ryder now. Right, Ryder, I forgot all about him. And everything that wasn't one perfect moment. In the darkness, her hand finds yours and you give it a squeeze. Thanks, Belle. You were everything I needed. You and Manny find Ryder near the hotel entrance. His expression settled into its usual inscrutability. All packed and ready to go? Sure am. Only things I'm missing are you two. Thanks, Ryder. I'm sorry this night was such a waste of time. He shrugs and shoves his hand deep in his pockets. You win some, you lose some. The three of you turn to leave and are stopped when the sound of a microphone feedback from the ballroom squawks through the air. Is this thing on? Mandy, isn't that your dad? We could have everyone's attention for a moment. We have an announcement we'd like to make. Oh, God, it's both of them. What are they doing now? We should go back and hear their announcement. Or we could duck out now while we still have a chance. Mandy looks back and forth between you before heaving a sigh and heading for the ballroom. Resigned, you and Ryder follow. To start off, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. The money we raised will go a long way in helping us continue our humanitarian efforts. It's always been a goal to give back in a big way, but for decades our ranching responsibilities have taken center stage. Which is why we're pleased to announce that we're moving forward with our charity work full time. Starting tonight, we will be officially retiring from the world of ranching. And our new owner of Martinez Ranch Incorporated will be... Our daughter, Mandy. What? I mean, I would at least hope so. She is your daughter, after all. <clears throat> Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the, to the bottom of the video where there's the description and all that. There's things to uh, check out, ways to support, ways to become more of an intricate part of this community and this family. And again, ways to support. There's the join feature. There's the thanks feature. A lot of that that's built into YouTube and officially goes through YouTube and helps support the channel if you so wish. Especially after doing uh, choices for as long as we have been. One of... Uh, the original creators for the Choices content, as well as uh, we've been doing this for, what, seven years now? Um, we've had this channel for 11 years and uh, going on 12, if not already there. Um, so we've been doing this for a while. So again, if you ever want to feel for uh, like supporting this channel through uh, monetary means, it would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, again, if you're not able to, that is fine as well. Again! There are plenty of things you can do to help support this community, this channel, and whatnot, if you're not able to do that. But without further ado, thanks again for watching. Love your beautiful faces, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.